No, but wait, there's a season to relationship. Can I just give it to you for a second? Please. First season, somewhere in three to five years. Varies for people, most seven. Huge chemistry, and everything seems to be perfect and easy, and you have the best relationship in the world, and everybody envies you because you still have polarity, and if things go well, you have so much attraction. When you're attracted to somebody, you make everything great. Mm -hmm. Everything they say is great. But then there's some days where you'll start to gradually, as time goes by, run into challenges. It may not even be each other. And you deal with those challenges and the frustration around each other, and some of that feeling gets in there, and maybe she starts to say, man, why does he always say that? Or you think, why can't she ever get ready? Why are we always late? Little shit that you feel a little resistance to. But if you don't solve it, it'll start to build over the time until the resistance starts to be a little bit of rejection, right? And then you might start saying something and it doesn't feel fair. And then some people just go into depression and they stay in a relationship 20 years and they have two different lives and they live together, but they're really not there, yeah. right? That first season usually is pretty easy. And then you start bumping into things that are different and that's what makes us grow. But some people think the purpose of relationship is pleasure mm -mm. and it's not pleasurable it's anymore. Partnership. So they're out. That's most people. The second season, so that's springtime. Summer is a more of a test. Summer is you run into some real problems. Your kid gets ill or you have a kid or something's gone wrong with the business or there's something going on in the economy or COVID. And you go, you're both individuals and so you're trying to still meet your own needs and so the battles get stronger and a lot of people leave there. They go, they're not in it for me. They're not here for me. It's me, me, me still. Where the world transforms is when you go from conditional love to unconditional love, right? Mm. When you go into the third season of life, that's usually, somebody's usually at least in their 40s, quite honestly, and now you are so in love, it's eternal love, you know it's love, you've been through shit together, you grew together, you expand together, you kept coming closer and closer together, and now problems will still show up. Maybe one of your parents gets Alzheimer's, maybe there's some new challenge to the business, but you solve it together and it's a we, and you have, there are no conditions to your love. It's like most people have great relationships with their kids because they know they're not gonna leave them. <laughs> you know? But that man or woman may leave me. So if, if your kid, you don't have one yet, but if your kid killed somebody, you wouldn't support it, but you'd still love them. Yeah. But people say in a relationship, if you ever do this and I'm out of here, that's conditional love. When you get the third season, you're past all that shit. You just love that person's soul and you will still have problems, but you solve them together. And then the fourth season is the final winter time of your life. And that's where, as the years go by, the body starts to break down and the soul starts to ascend and one of you will pass. And if the love is that deep, if you've gone through all the seasons, you have the privilege of whether you go first or they goes first of knowing it's eternal love. And it's something beyond imagination. It brings tears to my eyes because I have the privilege of having that with my wife after 24 years. Most incredible soul that I could ever dream of having. I, think, I thank God every day because I go like, I help millions of people and my gift was he gave me this woman in my life. And I will probably go before her because I'm older than she is. She may go before me. I don't relish the, the moments of that time, but it just makes everything more precious because you know time is limited. I'll be 64 in a month, so I'm still a young man, but I have a lot of friends that have died in their 60s and some in their 50s and some in their 70s. So you start to realize there's a point in your life and you're not there where you will hit what they call middle age. And here's how you know your middle age. You'll realize there may be more days behind me than ahead of me. I had my 60th birthday four years ago. I had this big party and raised a bunch of money to save children. It was really wonderful. And children were trafficked, raised $19 million. Great party. I didn't want to do a party, but when we made it with a purpose, we did it. And one of my friends got up, who's now 80 years old, and he goes, welcome to midlife. He goes, then again, I don't know many 120 year olds. <laughs> and so when you look and you go, the racetrack of life only has so much time, it makes it more valuable. I was gonna ask, does, does, now that you know that and it brings you tears in your eyes, the, the moment that you're with your wife means a lot more. Every moment means it. Yeah. So. You don't have to wait till you're that stage. If you know what the racetrack looks like, and by the way, it's the same for everyone. Most pattern. people don't make it to the fourth level, as you well know, or even the third level, but with your sense of grace and gratitude and love and your desire to serve your wife, not just get from your wife, I believe you've got that opportunity. But if you know where it is, you get there quicker. You don't have to go through some of the other things. You can get to the we part. You can get to the unconditional love part. 
so much more rapidly. The biggest problem in relationships today is everybody thinks you're supposed to meet my needs, right? And no, that's not how it works. What, in a relationship, you can have one or two things. You're gonna have like, people talk about toxic masculine. There's toxic masculine, toxic feminine. It's somebody who thinks I'm getting what I want or I'm out of here. So some men Spoiled. are demanding. Some women are, are will use their their you know sensual ways to get whatever they want, and if they don't get it, they're out of here. Some men, oh, this is what I'm doing. I'm out of here. It's an immature person. The second stage is equality. Okay, you do your part, I do my part. Well, that's a transaction, and it sounds really good because it sounds egalitarian on the surface. It is, but then there's no opposite energies and there's no passion. So you have two people that are good friends and they live together, but they don't really have any passion. Those are the people that say, oh, it works, so I stick around. Yeah. There's, no, then, there's but, no passion. But there's a third level, and the third level is your needs or my needs. Amen. Instead of, I can't make you feel this way, I'll do whatever it takes to meet your needs, because that's what lights me up. My wife and I have that experience. It's like the, the fights we have are play fights. I'm trying to do something for her. No, no, she's trying to do it for me. And we get in this play fight and it's fun, but it's, that's a quality, quality problem to have, right? It's a different thing. But you can get there faster if you know what the target is. Yeah. You don't have to take so long. You know, some seasons, some winters are long, some are short, right? You can speed up the seasons if you know where you're going. Again, it's pattern recognition, pattern utilization, and maybe pattern creation.